I'm going to show you functionality in PeopleSoft Financials that exists in both Classic User Interface and the Fluid Interface. I'm in the Classic menu and I'm navigating to Employee Self-Service, then Travel and Expense Center, then My Wallet. In normal Classic behavior, we're usually presented with a method to search for the record we're after. In most components, the search dialog is displayed based on the search record in the component. I want to see my record, so we'll use the employee associated with the Opera ID that I signed in as, KU0042 or Kenneth Schumacher. This brings up a page to define filter parameters. Let's put a range starting at 2004 to bracket the demo data for this employee. Press search and we see a list of transactions. I can select any one of these to see the detail, make changes, save, in most classic pages, you either press Next in List or you press Return to Search, that button to go back to the filtered list. So the first thing I want to point out is how many steps you go through to get to the information you want to see. We have this nested or hierarchical menu to wind our way into the component we wanted to access. Then we selected the record we wanted to see. This is pretty typical of most classic pages within PeopleSoft. But if you think how commercial websites work, we seldom see this type of navigation or behavior. The UI design typically tries to minimize the number of clicks or for smaller device finger taps. The second thing I want to point out is how this looks when I make my browser narrower. I can drag the right edge of the browser in to make the viewable area smaller, but the content on the page stays fixed. In fact, as I drag the edge of the browser into the page controls, they just get chopped off. Now go to Fluid Home. We're presented with a home page containing a set of tiles that we can either click or if we're in a, on a tablet or a phone we would tap. The employee self-service is the default home page but we can either drop down this list to select other home pages or on a touch screen we would just swipe left and right to, the, to scroll through the home pages. So let's look at the Employee Self-Service homepage. Notice the various tiles. And notice that the Expense tile is dynamic. It shows how much unapplied charges exist. I'll click on the Expense tile. This leads us to a page with several tiles, some showing various dynamic content. Clicking on My Wallet presents the summary wallet data on the left, and when we click any of the items on the left side, the right side changes to the detail of that expense item. There's no search dialog to go through and both the summary and detail are presented together on a single page. We can make changes on the right hand side, save those changes, and select another item for review. This is a very non-disruptive experience. I don't wait for a different page to be launched and we don't have to return to the previous page. Everything is right here. Now let's resize the browser like we did before. I'll drag the right side to make the window more narrow. Notice how the controls move along with the browser and the viewable area resizes in a fluid motion. As we keep going, we hit a point where the screen is getting too small to hold the controls. Then this happens. See how the screen changes to display the right panel with more room, but the left panel collapses into this control. We can now pull this panel out to make a selection, then collapse it for review. Now let's do the same thing with a phone. I'm accessing the same URL from an iPhone. See how the tiles are sized and arranged to fit the small geometry of the phone screen? It responds to rotating the phone from portrait to landscape and I can swipe to change home pages. I'll tap on the expense tile, then tap on my wallet. See how different this presentation is compared to the laptop view. Notice the size of the controls, the readability, as well as the controls that you would push, the cancel, the save. Again, I want to point out the same two things the number of taps on a mobile device to get to the information I want to see. Didn't take me long to get here and it's very intuitive and smooth with how I navigate around. 
Second, it's responsive. Depending on the size of the screen or the device you're using, the display, even the content, can change. In this course, we're going to learn how to develop applications using the Fluid UI. We'll be learning about the changes to Application Designer that allows developers to build pages with the style elements we've just seen in the My Wallet page. We'll learn a lot about HTML and CSS, especially in terms of how it relates to Fluid pages built in People Tools. We'll learn about different search strategies, responsive strategies, coding patterns. I'll present the material in a progressive way, starting simple, getting complex, and we'll go fast. You won't have to wait until the end of the course to begin using these principles, and you won't have to spend hours at a time learning. I'll be teaching the concepts in sections, each containing lessons that can be easily consumed in a few minutes with all of the materials you need to reference the concepts later. By the time you complete this course, you will have all the knowledge and skills needed to build beautiful, functional, usable applications using the Fluid User Interface.